Hello, guys. Uh, this lecture is over um, viruses. So um, I hope uh, you guys, um, oh, somebody's ringing uh, my door. Uh, oh, that's okay. Well, my son will get it. So <clears throat> let me turn the uh, page a little bit this way. So I think that's, that's good now. So uh, let's go when I had virology many, many, many years ago. Uh, and um, what my professor at that time, uh, back in 1980s, he said, viruses are viruses. There is not, he, according to him, there is not a good definition for viruses. And I, yeah, I believe that. And look at your textbook. Your textbook is... Uh, taking three lines to explain uh, a virus. And uh, of course, uh, a virus is a virus and a virus is an infectious particle consisting of gene uh, pack, uh, packaged in a protein code. And we have uh, viroids, which you will see later on, which they're just, just RNA. Uh, they are not uh, uh, you know, packaged in a protein code, but most viruses that you and I are familiar with uh, that are packaged in a protein code, they have a gene. And that gene here, you see, it could be an RNA or DNA, and you will see that. Viruses are much simpler than uh, prokaryotic cells. You saw the prokaryotic cells do not have nucleus, uh, but uh, these guys, not only they do not have nucleus, they do not, they are not cell. They do not have any organelles, they do not have a cell membrane, as we know of, they have a phospholipid bilayer, and that's about it. And well, they have a protein called Wolsey. But anyhow, viruses cannot reproduce or carry out metabolism outside of a host cell. So one of the requirements for viruses are, as you can see, these are characteristics of viruses, but there is not a good definition uh, for a virus that we know. The very first, I'm not going to read over this one. Um, the history of what happened with uh, discovery of viruses, but back in 1800, late in 1800, you know, scientists were able to uh, uh, guess what is a virus. And the very first one, they've caught it from tobacco plants. You know, when they say tobacco, mosaic tobacco plant virus, that was the very first virus that was identified in uh, tobacco plants. Here they are. That's the experiment. Uh, I will not ask you any experimental questions in here uh, for the quiz or exam, uh, but that's what they've done. And then uh, that's what uh, tobacco viruses, as you can see, the viruses are here on tobacco leaves. And that was the very first time uh, this is a uh, healthy uh, plant. And then they were able to pass it through uh, porcelain filters known as a tra to trap bacteria but a bacteria remains here. The very first people have done this and then took this and dropped it on the leaves and they said, wow, they became infected and said, what the heck, uh, what is going on? Uh, it's not bacteria, so what is it? Then they call it a virus. A virus, I used to know the definition of virus. Virus, it was voracious, it comes from voracious, uh, but anyhow, I took very biology and I forgot, we can what is literally but virus in what language is in Greek or is it in, um, uh, or is it in Latin? So anyhow, a virus is a very small infectious particle consisting of a nucleic acid. Yes, enclosed that nucleic acid could be RNA or DNA. Uh, and then uh, uh, you will see the list here in a minute. There could be double stranded or single stranded and so on and so forth, you will see that. In some cases, a membranous envelope. Uh, some viruses have a membranous envelope. Viral gene, viral genome, well, we talked about that a little bit so far, may consist of a double-stranded DNA, very good, double-stranded uh, RNA. Depending on its type of nucleic acid, a virus is called DNA virus or RNA virus. The genome is either a single linear or circular molecule of nucleic acids and viruses have been uh, three and several uh, thousand genomes in their uh, genes in the genomes, yes. 
A capsid, make sure you know the definition of a capsid. A capsid is a protein shell that encloses the, um, the virus. So it's a protein shell outside of the uh, genome, the DNA, all of that goodies or RNA is here. And they, they, they have a shell, they have a code, it's called capsid, which is made up of protein. Capsid are built from protein substances called uh, capsomeres, and a capsid have, uh, can have a variety of structures. Here they are. So here is in tobacco mosaic, you can see that. Uh, look at the uh, look at the RNA and the capsid uh, is a protein molecule look like that. And then some of the capsid attached to them are glycoproteins. This is a, this is the uh, glucose molecules strand of them, uh, the spikes sometimes they call them. So that would be a uh, what is this virus? Is it herpes? Yeah, adenovirus. Okay. And then influenza virus look like this. And then the bacteriophage which uh, I will let you know what is it exactly you guys need to know. So here is a, um, another virus, protein, the blue is protein, and then inside it has DNA, uh, adenovirus. And then uh, you have uh, this influenza uh, virus, similar to coronavirus, it has RNA, it has the capsid protein molecule around it, it has an envelope, these two did not have an envelope, and when I say an envelope, you know what I mean by phospholipid envelope, okay? And then, uh, of course, you have uh, these spikes, which are uh, glycoproteins, okay? And these spikes, this is very much similar to um, uh, COVID that you're dealing with, coronavirus. And I will talk about coronavirus in here at the end. And then you have the bacteriophage, the phages, they have a head, they have, these are all protein molecules except the inside, which is DNA, and the phages only and only infect bacteria. They do not infect anything else. Uh, quiz question, exam question, they only infect bacteria. Okay, let's go. Oh, what is going on? Here we go. Again, going into details, glycoproteins and uh, uh, the tobacco mosaic does not even have the glycoprotein. So not all viruses have these glycoproteins, but they do have this protein coat outside of them. And the inside could be DNA or RNA. And I don't know any virus that has both of them. Okay. They, they, either they have DNA or RNA. That's an exam question. So we talked about all of these. Um, some viruses have accessory structures that helps them to infect host cells. Yes, that accessory structure, yes, that glycoprotein that I talked about. Viral envelope drive from uh, membranes of a host cell. So it, the viruses that have uh, the, the envelope, the phospholipid layer, uh, based on evidences, it seems like they evolve more recently and uh, surrounded a capsid of influenza virus and many other viruses uh, found in animals. Viral uh, envelopes contain a combination of viral uh, and uh, host cell uh, molecules. So bacteriophage, as I said, they are viruses that infect bacteria only, no other cells. They have the most complex capsid, the protein code found among viruses. And phages have been, so since they do not have a uh, envelope, a phospholipid bilayer, they are kind of an ancient uh, a virus. So phages have been elongated capsid head and that enclose their DNA and a protein tail uh, piece attaches uh, the phage that the host and injects into the phage inside of the cell. You will see that. Viruses replicate only in host cells. That's right. That's obligate for them. Uh, viruses are obligate intracellular parasites, which mean uh, they can replicate only within a host cell. And then each virus has a range of host cells, a limited number of host cells uh, that it can infect. Uh, once a viral genome has entered a cell, the cell begins to manufacture viral proteins. The virus makes use of host enzymes, ribosomes, tRNA, amino acids, ATPA, all of that from the host cell. Uh, viral nucleic acid molecules and capsomeres uh, spontaneously self-assemble into a, a new virus. So when inside, you will see that. I'll show you some pictures. It comes up. 
So when these particles, these parts of the virus are there, somehow, some way, we don't know yet, okay? It doesn't mean that I'm not gonna ask exact questions. Um, they come together, okay, and make the virus, okay? I know, I know you see, I probably don't know what I'm talking about. Let me here, right here, very good. So here is a virus right here that uh, has a protein code and it has DNA, could be RNA. Uh, it injects itself, the DNA comes inside of the host cell. This is the host cell right here. And then it replicates the DNA and then pieces and bits of the protein molecules uh, are used and the ribosomes of the host cells, all of the machinery of the host cells are being used by viruses to make up these particles, the capsids, the protein molecules. And then the protein molecules will encapsulate these vi DNA viruses and they leave. So what I was saying in the last overhead that these particles, they come together, they do not use the Golgi apparatus, or they do not use the uh, endoplasmic reticulum. They do not use anything. They, it seems like it, they are coming together and form the virus, and then they leave the cell. They don't make any sense. Let's watch this and see what it says. A virus is an intracellular parasite that can reproduce only by taking over a host cell. A virus consists of a nucleic acid genome enclosed in a protein shell called a capsid. In the virus shown here, the genome consists of DNA, but some viruses have RNA. Some viruses are also covered by a membranous envelope that is derived from the membrane of the host cell. There is usually a lock and key fit between the proteins of the capsid and receptors on a particular type of host cell. That's right. The virus attaches to a host cell and viral DNA enters the cell. Viral DNA uses nucleotides and enzymes of the host cell to replicate itself. Are you talking about the viral that? DNA then commandeers other host cell materials and machinery to transcribe its genes into messenger RNA right. and translate the RNA message into capsid proteins. Viral DNA and capsid proteins then assemble into new viruses. Mature viruses leave the host cell, often destroying the cell in the process. The viruses can go on to infect other cells, spreading the viral infection. Okay. Pretty much it said everything in a nutshell that you need, you need to know. Replicate, uh, replicative cycles of the phage, uh, phages, uh, phages, both pronunciation are heard, phages, phages. Uh, the ph phages are the best understood of all viruses. Uh, phages have two alternative reproductive mechanism, the lytic cycle and lysogenic cycle which I will talk about that uh, later on. Here we go, I guess, right here. The lytic cycle is a phage replicative uh, cycle that uh, accumulate, uh, culminates in the death of the whole cell. So in the lytic cycle, most important thing you should know that the whole cell will die, okay? A phage that reproduces only by the lytic cycle is called uh, a virulent phage. And the bacteria have defenses against phages, and based on that defenses, uh, they find the uh, CRISPR gene uh, that uh, nowadays I will talk about the next chapter uh, because of that defense mechanism. And they were able to find the mechanism how to uh, scientists nowadays, uh, and I'm sure someday they are going to win the Nobel Prize for it, uh, to be able to find the CRISPR gene, and the CRISPR gene can uh, fix the uh, genes that are not correct in human, they cause disease or so on and so forth. But anyhow, that's, that's for the next chapter. Let's leave it there. But make sure you know this, the bacteria have a defense mechanism and including restriction enzymes that recognizes and cut up certain uh, DNA. So here it is, this is the lytic cycle. So uh, right here, that's the plasmid, remember that, of the bacteria, and then the phage sits on the bacteria. Of course, the bacteria must have the receptor for it, for that phage, okay? And then uh, the phage releases its DNA, and based on that DNA, pieces and bits, the ribosomes, use ribosomes and enzymes of the uh, bacteria and multiply uh, itself. And then the pieces come together, 
that's still uh, part of the puzzle, uh, scientists, how these pieces come together. We don't know, so that's what they say. And then uh, the fudge, a complete fudge will get out of the uh, bacteria cell, and of course the bacteria cell is uh, dead. What is this one? Uh, Self-assembly, yes, he's emphasizing on self-assembly in here, but I believe uh, what it is, they are not sure. Okay, T4 lytic cycle, let's watch this. Bacteriophages, or phages, are viruses that infect bacteria. This is a T4 phage, which consists of DNA inside a protein coat. The lytic cycle begins when the tail fibers of the phage stick to receptor sites on the surface of a host bacterium such as E. coli. The phage injects its DNA into the host cell, leaving the empty protein coat outside. The DNA of the host cell is destroyed, and host cell enzymes and nucleotides are commandeered to replicate the phage DNA, making more phage DNA. The host cell's enzymes and ribosomes transcribe the phage genes and translate them into phage proteins. Phage parts accumulate and assemble to form phages. Phage enzyme digests the bacterial cell wall and the cell ruptures or lysis. As many as 200 phages spill out. Each of them may go on to infect another cell. This diagram summarizes the lytic cycle of bacteriophage T4. Right, lytic cycle, you guys. Okay, remember that. And then we have lysogenic cycle, which I will talk about. Here we go. Lysogenic cycle uh, replicates the phage genome without destroying the whole cell. Okay. This integrated uh, viral DNA is known as a prophage. So here it is. That's what really happened, guys. Uh, so I hope you understand it and you know what we are talking about. So the lytic cycle, we already talked about it. The phage sits on the bacteria and put the, its DNA into the bacteria. And the bacteria eventually will die and the phage multiply and get out of the bacteria. And then what another route is possible, it is called the prophage. What happens, the DNA of the virus right here get incorporated to the DNA of the bacteria right here. And that's called prophage. The bacteria multiply, the DNA of the virus multiply. The bacteria multiply, the DNA of the virus multiply. Nothing happens to the bacteria. Bacteria is happy, happy, multiplying. Nothing big deal is happening. Okay. Now, based on what is from environment, the environment gives some stimuli or some factors from the environment, then these bacteria that have the DNA of the phage, they go into lytic cycle. They start multiplying pieces and bits of the virus and the pieces and bits of the virus multiply and multiply and the bacteria die. So you do not have, there is none, there is none that I know of, okay? Uh, again, my knowledge is limited. There is no host cell, either our host cell or bacterial host cell that pieces and bits of the virus multiply and mul virus multiply and the whole cell still stays intact. The whole cell does not die. We do not have that. We have it like um, herpes viruses. Anytime you have a herpes breakout, you don't have herpes breakout all, all the time. Sometimes you have herpes breakout because a piece and bits of DNA of the virus is incorporated into our DNA, okay? And the virus, if, you are, may, if I may use the term dormant, the virus is dormant. And all of a sudden, the stress for us goes up. And then what happens? The herpes virus breaks out. And they multiply. And of course, the whole cell will die. Our host cell will die. I hope I'm making some sense. So I'm making an analogy of the bacteriophage to herpes virus, which um, uh, we will talk about it a little bit later. Here it is, a lysogenic cycle, analytic cycle. Make sure you be able to compare and talk to them, uh, be able to recognize. In contrast to the lytic cycle, the lysogenic cycle reproduces the viral genetic material without destroying the host. The lysogenic cycle of phage lambda 
begins when a phage binds to the surface of a host bacteria. The phage injects its DNA into the host cell, leaving the empty protein code outside. The viral DNA is incorporated into the host cell DNA, where it is called a prophage. Every time the host bacterium reproduces, it replicates the phage DNA along with its own and passes the copies oh, yeah. on to daughter cells. That's Occasionally, nice the phage DNA exits the bacterial chromosome and initiates a lytic cycle. The viral DNA takes over the metabolic machinery of the host cell to make phage DNA and proteins. The host cell lyses, releasing phages, which can infect other cells. Okay. This diagram summarizes the lysogenic and lytic cycles of phage lambda. Okay, as you notice he, in this video, he didn't talk about what happens that the virus decides to go into lytic, right, cycle. The lytic cycle, again, the external environmental factors cause whatever it is, could be a variety of things, it causes the virus to choose to go into lytic cycle. Okay, uh, and environmental signals here, yeah, here finally, oh my God, my life is easy. Uh, and environmental signals can uh, trigger uh, the virus genome to ex uh, exit the uh, bacterial chromosomes and switch to the lytic mode. Uh, phages, uh, phages, your textbook says phages, uh, that uses both lytic and lysogenic cycle are called uh, temperate, uh, uh, temperate uh, phages. Okay. Uh, Replicating cycles of animal viruses, there are two key variables used to classify viruses that are infect animals and RNA or DNA genome, a single stranded or double stranded genome, uh, whereas a few bacteriophages have an envelope or uh, RNA genome, many animal viruses have. Okay, this is the classification uh, of uh, the viruses. Um, so, uh, I'm gonna, it's gonna break it down and talk about it. And I will let you know what viruses you're supposed to know. Uh, there's a big list. Um, like, I don't expect you to know much about adenoviruses, respiratory viruses, tumor causing viruses. That's what they call it, adenoviruses. So, and does it, uh, the envelope, does it have the envelope or not? You know, the phospholipid bilayer. Uh, no, uh, papilloma virus. Yes, it caused worse and cervical cancer newly. And the vaccine came out for it. Okay, so these are what, yeah, you guys, these are double-stranded DNA, DS, okay? So papillomavirus, I would like you to know. Uh, herpes virus, yes, it's a double-stranded DNA. Again, that is something I would like to cause herpes. I talked about it uh, and uh, so on and so forth a little bit, uh, herpes virus. Uh, pox virus, do not worry about it. Single-stranded DNA virus, uh, parvovirus is very important. Uh, when I get, um, you take virology, then you have to know all of these. Okay, just for our purposes, um, I'm not um, too crazy about it, uh, but anyhow. Uh, real viruses, uh, they are, um, if you would, they are, again, I'm not too crazy about it. Uh, they, uh, they are, um, Double-stranded RNA. Oops, sorry, let's go back. The double-stranded RNA right here for real viruses, and then again, uh, parvoviruses very important again. Um, uh, Single-stranded RNA. So again, I'm, I'm not circling them that you're supposed to know. Okay, uh, picorna virus, no, rhinovirus is common cold, yeah, very important, you know, they are whatever. Uh, they are uh, single-stranded RNA, okay. Corona, right here, single-stranded RNA. I would like you to know that. Uh, Flavivo virus, do not worry about that. Uh, uh, Togo virus, do not worry about that. Filovirus, uh, ortho, uh, mixovirus, no, uh, paramixovirus, uh, and then uh, these are all, again, these are all examples of sing, uh, single-stranded RNA. Uh, these are single-stranded RNA, so it uh, serves as a uh, 
for mRNA synthesis as as mRNA, but anyhow, and then single stranded and other retroviruses. Yes, definitely you should know uh, HIV. They are single stranded RNA. That one you should know also. Okay. So I, I told you pretty much what are the viruses that you're supposed to know, um, and I hope um, you study them. There's only a handful. Oh, come on, I cannot go back. Right, uh, one, two, uh, three, four. Okay, not much. Okay, viral envelope. Many viruses uh, infect animals, have a membrane envelope, viral uh, glycoproteins, and that's the key, the glycoproteins, there is a receptors on host cells and the glycoprotein of the virus, this is the virus, this is the virus. So this is the glycoprotein I showed at the beginning of the lecture. They sit, they, the receptors on the host cell recognize that, like lock and key, we talked about it at the beginning of the semester. So that infect the cells. For example, HIV virus does not infect our liver cells. The only thing they infect, they are infecting our white blood cells. It means we our white blood cells, CD4, CD8, they have the receptor for HIV. Okay, so I hope I'm making some sense. Many viruses, in fact, um, animal have a membrane envelope, uh, viral glycoproteins on the envelope binds to specific receptors molecules on the surface of the cell. That the small viral envelopes are derived from the host cell's plasma membrane as a viral capsid. Exist, exit. Other viral membranes formed from the host cell's nuclear envelope and then uh, replaced by envelopes made from Golgi apparatus. Right here, they're talking about the uh, RNA and the capsid going inside of the cell, and then they use the, uh, they, they use the machinery of the host cells to make the mRNA. Is the template would be the viral. On uh, RNA, okay, and then they go ahead use the machinery of the host cell to multiply uh, its parts. Okay, uh, the broadest variety of RNA genome is found in viruses that infect animals. Retroviruses are talked about that. Make sure you know that uh, HIV is a retrovirus right here. Everything in this page is important. Uh, use the enzyme reverse transcriptase, right? Ace at the end of the word means enzyme. Uh, their RNA genome into DNA, you will see that. Human uh, immunodeficiency virus is a retrovirus that causes AIDS acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. The viral DNA um, that is integrated into the host genome is called a provirus. Unlike a podge, a provirus remains a permanent resident of the host cell. RNA polymerase uh, transcribes the viral DNA into RNA molecules, and the RNA molecules function both as mRNAs and, uh, for the synthesis of the viral proteins and the genomes for the new virus particles released from the cell. HIV, and let's talk about that, very important. So. Here is HIV, it has RNA, and also HIV has the enzyme reverse transcriptase, the green dots, okay? The green dots are reverse transcriptase. So with that help of that enzyme reverse transcriptase, it means reverse of, you have RNA, and reverse of transcription is taking place based on the RNA, DNA synthesized. Remember? From past few lectures, you have DNA double-stranded. They separate new RNA. Remember, the RNA is formed by the new DNA. The RNA is formed by the DNA, and then the RNA goes away. The two strands come back. You remember that of the DNA? My hands are DNA. This is opposite. You have RNA now inside of the cell from a virus, and DNA is being synthesized. So it's reverse of what you learned before. There is an enzyme involved for that. And that enzyme is called, it's needed for that. It's called reverse transcriptase to make DNA from RNA. The process is called reverse transcription. It does not happen in the uh, 
uh, eukaryotic cells and it only happens in the presence of the enzymes, okay. uh, presence of uh, viruses, a retrovirus. Retro, it means going back. You remember that? So anyhow, DNA is synthesized. DNA goes into the nucleus, DNA base. This, the sequence of that DNA, A to T, G to C, G to C, is based on the RNA of the virus, right? That goes into the host cell, host nucleus, and then mRNA synthesized. mRNA goes to the uh, host cells, uses the ribosomes and all of the enzymes, and starts making pieces and bits of the virus. Pieces and bits of the virus are made, they come together, self-assimilation, they leave the cell, and guess what? This cell is dead. And that cell is our white blood cell. And white blood cells can destroy other infections, other bacteria and viruses. So if we do not have an army inside of our body, which is our white blood cells, then anything can kill us. A common cold virus can kill, kill us. A simple bacteria can kill us. And that's what happens with HIV. The HIV itself does not kill a person. It's the secondary infections that kills the person. Okay, I hope I'm making some sense. Here we go. They're showing you uh, pets, uh, pieces of that diagrams and these are the transmission electron microscopes they took. Uh, Okay, scanning electrons. So let's watch the video. Understanding the structure and life cycle of HIV, the AIDS virus, is critically important to dealing with the disease. HIV is covered by an envelope derived from a host cell membrane. Glycoproteins studying the envelope recognize and bind to receptor molecules on the host cell. A protein coat surrounds the viral genetic material which consists of two molecules of single-stranded RNA. The enzyme reverse transcriptase enables the virus to make DNA from an RNA template, a trick for which this group of viruses is named, retroviruses. The RNA molecules of HIV enter a host cell when the virus fuses with the plasma membrane and the coat proteins are removed by enzymes. Reverse transcriptase catalyzes the synthesis of a DNA strand complementary to the viral RNA strand, and then a second DNA strand complementary to the first. The double-stranded DNA is incorporated as a provirus into the host cell's chromosomal DNA, where it may lie dormant for years. Occasionally, the provirus is transcribed into RNA. This RNA serves as both messenger RNA for the formation of HIV proteins and as genetic material for the next generation of viruses. Protein coats form around viral RNA and reverse transcriptase molecules. Viruses bud from the host cell, acquiring envelopes as they leave. Okay, uh, one thing I forgot to mention that the odds of uh, mutation or uh, viruses that have RNA are more than uh, the uh, viruses that have DNA. So RNA viruses can mutate more often and than DNA viruses. Having said that, HIV, we cannot find a vaccine for it because it mutates so much. And that is, um, that is why it's tough to find a vaccine or HIV. Evolution of viruses. Viruses do not fit our definition of living organisms. Yes, they are not living organisms. Uh, we do not classify them as living organisms. Viruses are not living organisms. Uh, that's all of scientists uh, agree on that one. It's just not my opinion or your textbook's opinion. Everybody agrees on that one. Since viruses uh, can replicate only within the cells, that's why and they probably evolve as bits of a cellular nucleic acid. Candidates uh, for the source of viral genomes includes plasmids and transposons, which I'll talk about that. Plasmids is a circular DNA of bacteria. Plasmids, transposons, and viruses are all mobile genetic elements, and that's why. The largest virus 
uh, yet discovered in the size of a small bacterium and its genome encodes proteins involved in translations, DNA repair, protein folding, and uh, polysaccharide synthesis. There is a controversy about whether this virus evolved before or after cells. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, viruses, viroids, and prions are formidable pathogens in animal and plants. Diseases caused by viral infection affects human agricultural crops and livestock, of course. Uh, smaller, less complex uh, entities uh, called viroids and prions uh, cause uh, disease in plants and animals. Viroids, uh, usually uh, it's only RNA, just pieces of RNA. And prions, where is it? Prions are just protein molecules. Okay, so uh, the prions are protein molecules and viroids and prions, of course, infect human and these, uh, I'm sorry, infect animals. Okay, and then viroids is usually found in plants. So viruses uh, may damage kill cells by causing the release of hydrolytic enzymes of lysosomes. Some viruses cause uh, viral diseases in animals, cause infected cells to produce toxins that lead to disease and symptoms. Other uh, have molecular components such as uh, envelope proteins that are our toxins. Vaccines are harmless uh, derivative of pathogens, microbes that stimulates the immune system to mount defense against the harmful pathogens. Yeah, that's a definition of vaccine. Vaccines uh, can prevent certain viral illnesses, yes. And then uh, viral infections cannot be treated by antibiotics, very important. Viral infections cannot be treated by antibiotics. And everybody should get vaccine. Uh, if you're evading vaccine, you're exposing yourself to a lot of diseases. Okay. That's a fact. Um, I don't know. Uh, some people like to argue with that. Uh, that is fine. That is their personal opinion. Uh, but most of scientific community agrees that um, vaccine are needed. Um, and, you know, I, I don't want to get into a lot of other stuff. Uh, antiviral drugs uh, can help uh, to treat, um, uh, uh, though not cure viral infections, yes. Antiviral drugs can help to treat, uh, though not cure. Emerging viruses are those that suddenly, like HIV, become apparent. Uh, epidemics are, uh, for example, infections that are spreading in a local area or country. Uh, flu epidemics caused by new strains. Um, viruses are re uh, the classification of viruses are by strains. The name of the strain is used uh, for viruses. Uh, viral diseases in small isolated population can emerge to become global. And if it becomes global, then it is pandemic. It's coming up. Should I write it? Yeah, right here. The strains can cause a pandemic or global epidemics. Uh, the flu of 2009 was likely to pass humans from pigs. And the reason for it was originally called a swine flu. Here they are, H1N1. I don't know. You guys do not remember that. I remember those days. Um, it did not go to the United States, um, unlike uh, coronavirus, uh, but anyhow. Viroids and prions, I think I talked about it, um, circular uh, RNA, I talked about it, a uh, molecule that infects plants and disrupts their growth. Prions, slow acting, um, uh, virtually indestructible uh, infections, proteins that's called mad cow disease. Uh, uh, propagate converting normal proteins into prion proteins, um, um, scrapey in sheep, and mouth call disease, yes, so this right here, and uh, other diseases in cows. Here they are, they are talking about prions, how normal proteins they can, prions, again, they are being intensively studied, can convert a normal protein inside of our cells, human cells, especially our brain cells to a new prion. They are, again, exactly how does that happen? Um, we still don't know, or at least I don't know it in detail, okay? But it happens uh, in the mad cow disease. Here again, uh, you're at the end of, you're comparing the, very good, 
uh, lysogenic lytic cycle. COVID-19, let's have a few things, a word uh, uh, with it, uh, and then move on, and then we'll finish the chapter. Uh, coronavirus were first identified in 1960s, the seven coronavirus that can infect human. There are seven coronaviruses that can infect human. Coronavirus are named uh, for crown-like. That's what the name crown-like spike on the surface, uh, like influenza virus, almost like that, uh, with some variation um, and so on and so forth. So coronavirus, that's how you got the corona crown-like. Uh, and then there are four main subgrouping of coronavirus, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. So here is the structure of a coronavirus. They have these um, spikes, if you would. Uh, so S proteins, H, E proteins, and then they have RNA only right here. Okay, and then the poly A, you remember that? And then cap A, five prime cap A. M protein and envelope. They do have an envelope. So it has drive recently. Uh, not drive, what I mean, evolutionary wise, they are not an ancient virus. If you will. Here, uh, the best one, a uh, couple of the next one I found on internet that they can multiply. Um, here is we should have our respiratory cells, seems like it, uh, they have the receptors for it. So they cause uh, respiratory problems. So the, and the, the spikes right here, they sit on the receptors of our cells, epithelial cells of our respiratory tract. They release their uh, RNA. RNA go through our ribosomes. And then based on that, bits and pieces and multiply uh, its uh, RNA and bits and pieces are being made, bits and pieces are being self-assimilate, put together, and they leave the cell. When they leave the cell, guess what happened to the cell? It dies. We talked about that. Okay. So they do not have a progene. They have, uh, they, uh, you know, they multiply and multiply, and they get out of, and then, of course, they can become airborne. These viruses can become airborne and they can sit on the doorknobs, door handles, and infect people by sneezing, by coughing, and then, uh, being on a hard surface. Again, being on a hard surface for how long, we still don't know. Other viruses, we have some ideas. But like HIV, it cannot remain in here for a long time. Okay, but um, if this virus, coronavirus is on the heart surface and I grab it and I put my hand in my mouth, voila, I become infected with it. Here's again, another one, you can study it on your own and enjoy it. And uh, symptoms uh, of um, HIV, uh, HIV <laughs> COVID-19, they, uh, the, they call it the um, incubation period, if you would, The incubation period is two to 14 days. Exposure to virus, people with these uh, symptoms may have uh, COVID-19 uh, fevers and chills. They are not really in that order, but yeah, kind of sort of in that order, cough, shortness of breath and difficulty of breathing, fatigue, they're tired, uh, muscle and body aches. Yes, that happens. Not everybody has all of these symptoms, but these are common symptoms. Headache, uh, uh, new uh, loss of uh, taste, and then usually that comes back. Okay, and sore throat, con uh, congestion of urinary nose, uh, nausea and vomiting, and diarrhea. Those are all. Again, um, I said this is in, this uh, this virus can at the primary place of this virus is the respiratory tract, our lungs, and our respiratory system but also it can infect our digestive system too, diarrhea. It's not that bad in digestive system, it's worse in respiratory tract. And that concludes everything that I need to say about this chapter.